Good morning, Calvary. Pastor Chad here with your word for the day. It, happy Monday. Hope you had a great weekend and God spoke to you in worship, whether you joined us in person or online. Hey, we're in Genesis 37 and we're beginning a kind of a new chapter in the story because we're starting to focus on Joseph. Now, uh, Joseph, now this beginning of the story is abrupt and it's, and it's powerful, it's very informative, but it's very short. Uh, so here's the situation. Joseph has 10 older brothers. So Jacob is his dad. Joseph is son number 11. And Joseph is Jacob's favorite because he's the son of Rachel, who is his favorite wife. That's awkward to say. Uh, and, uh, but, but Joseph is, is dad's favorite, and he doesn't make any pretense about it. Okay, he, he, he says Joseph is his favorite. He gives Joseph a gift that demonstrates his favored status because he, you know, it's a coat of many colors. You've probably heard of that. And, and so that, that's a dysfunctional family uh, to, to be sure. But to make things even worse, Joseph is a snitch. Okay, he's with his brothers. He comes back and gives dad a bad report about his brothers. So Joseph's brothers hated him. And that's not my word. That's in scripture. His brothers, his older brothers actually hated him. And you'll see where that leads later on. And then to top all this off, Joseph has dreams, God given dreams about his brothers and his parents bowing down and worshiping him or bowing down in submission to him. Uh, now I'm just going to stop right there. That all sets the stage for the next chapter, which has a lot of tragedy and, and intrigue and evil in it. But what about us? What are some applications out of this beginning of Joseph's story for us? Here's three things that are really obvious. Number one, parents, please don't play favorites with your kids. God gives you your children, love them all, love them equally. Uh, you know, it doesn't mean you always treat them exactly the same way because they're different, but make sure that you don't play favorites with your children. That only sets things up for massive dysfunction. Secondly, bless with your words and don't curse. I mean, every time you open your mouth, you have a choice to bless or to curse. So choose to bless. Joseph was a snitch. You know, Joseph was ratting out his brothers and that, you know, damaged the relationship even more. So why don't you choose to be somebody who blesses with your words? I mean, if you have, speak the truth, but speak the truth in love. There's no place for brutal honesty in, among the people of God. And, and then third, just because God gives you a dream doesn't mean you have to share that dream with everybody around you. Okay, I've encountered a lot of people who said, God gave me this dream. I said, great, now do something with it. It's not about telling people the dream. It's about acting upon what God tells you to do. And the truth is, Joseph was arrogant. He had this dream. His brothers and his parents were going to bow down to him and submit to him. And he was rubbing their noses in his perceived greatness. Joseph was arrogant and you'll see in the next few chapters how God beats the arrogance out of Joseph. Let me say that again. God beat the arrogance out of Joseph. Because scripture tells us repeatedly, God is opposed to the proud, but gives grace to the humble. So if you're like Joseph in his early days and uh, you got big dreams and you're kind of arrogant, go ahead and practice humility and submit to God uh, now and save yourself a lot of pain because God does oppose the proud and he gives grace to the humble. So we as people who love Jesus need to practice humility. We need to practice serving. We need to practice blessing so that God will bless us and not have to beat the evil in us out of us. It's just a thought and I hope it's a thought that blesses your day. Have a great and glorious day and let's be humble.